Intersectionality theory. Theater should not only show the character's cover page. Intersectionality is a term that was coined by Kimberly Crenshaw in 1989. It has become the analytical framework that is used to talk about the structural identities of race, class, gender, and sexuality. This framework looks at the unique experience that arises out of the combination of these various oppressions. So why intersectionality? This video looks at the term not only in relation to feminism, but to theatre overall. Many theorists touch on various aspects of intersectionality, but do not bring together the critical difference when there is an overlap in the oppressions. This video will strive to demonstrate why the term intersectionality needs to be at the forefront in theatre. If intersectionality is accounted for, it can help to create a theatre that is more representative of reality. When it is not considered, the line between representing a character as a stereotype and representing a realistic character becomes very, very thin. Many production companies today strive to be innovative and intercultural. They put on productions with minorities as their focus. These productions make it their purpose to take the spotlight away from the white male privilege. When the productions attempt to do this, they need to ensure they are not emphasizing the minority in a way that shapes them into a stereotype. My first experience with theater theory was in the beginning of this school year. I had the wonderful opportunity to be involved in a Toronto culture and performance class. We got to go see a play in Toronto almost every week. The one week we went to go see the production by Anoush Arani, The Men in White, at Factory Theatre. Driving back on the bus, me and my bus buddy could not quite put a finger on what we did not enjoy about the performance. It was not until the class discussion that next Tuesday that the reason became clear. The characters were not believable. This play brings up many intense and current racial issues, but it does not critically present them. The play stayed on the surface to produce a stereotypical relationship between the characters. Each character had a trait that was brought forth, but this trait became their entire personality. An example from the play is the character Sam. His stupidity is supposed to serve as comic relief. It is exaggerated to an extreme extent that he is not developed in any other way. We do not appreciate him as an Asian Canadian. The wealth of knowledge he could have provided for the play is lost in this perspective. After The Men in White, you leave the theatre not fully recognizing the harsh reality of an immigration journey. When you compare The Men in White to Tara Began's play, Miss Julie Shima, the importance of considering intersectionality becomes evident. You cannot tell any story without considering intersectionality, especially one that attempts to celebrate and explore diversity. After reading the script for Miss Julie, I felt I understood much better how intersectionality can affect the meaning in a play. The message is more clear because intersectionality works to make the play more real. This realism can make it easier to emphasize and recognize the struggles the characters are experiencing. Intersectionality, in one way, highlights that people are more than just their minority. Began allowed for this to happen as she introduced intersectionality through experience. The main characters did not talk about their own minority explicitly. The differences and oppressions were evident in the interactions between the characters. As an audience member, you realize Christiane is indigenous and a female. You do not realize the implications of this intersection until an indigenous man and a woman of higher status are also taken into account. The perspective on minority coming from the individual's experience enforces the realism and in return removes the stereotypical aspect. Although not many theorists directly touch on intersectionality, a lot of theorists do talk about realism. Jill Dolan talks about how the audience is treated as a single mass, which is a characteristic of a realist performance. In my theory, I am suggesting kind of the opposite, that there are ways that realism can enhance the subjectivity of the audience. I believe a realist performance that considers intersectionality and its diverse characters forces you past the surface structure. There is no generalized stereotype to keep you afloat and at a distance from the characters. Each person in the audience is forced to reside somewhere deeper in the character's experience. I'm going to use the very wise words from Brandy Wilkins, Cantonese, and Yanni Lauzon to bring home the significance of intersectionality. In her article, Cantonese asks for a new vocabulary and evaluative framework to understand how performance, in particular, might intervene against the limitations that stereotypes 
imposed upon black expression. One of the answers she gives herself is that bodies and race should be analyzed relationally rather than hierarchically. Yanni Lauza discusses how she sees her body as a book. Your body is where all your information is stored. Her life experiences help inform her moments on stage. She states that her body knew the core issues. Oppression, colonialism, and the assumption of religious superiority. To put on these innovative and intercultural productions, the overlap of these separate minorities being celebrated also has to be displayed. A production has to be able to tell more than the readily available stereotype, right? Shouldn't the audience be critically reflecting on themselves? Shouldn't it make the audience witness the oppression, but also witness the individual? Intersectionality provides the groundwork for a realistic stage. You do not only witness their distinct traits, you also see their own mixture of experiences because of who they are. Their whole story is presented, not only the picture on the cover page.